we cast all our cares to you, O oh Lord, this morning. And we look to you to be our help in every situation we ever face. Lord, let your word penetrate through our hearts to challenge us, to encourage us, to correct us, to train us in righteousness that we may be prepared for every good work this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may have your seats. Good morning and praise the Lord. We thank God for yet another day and another Sunday he has granted us to hear his word. And this morning we are considering the topic, the call to intercession. If you've been with us this month, then you know that the theme for the month is a call to faith and intercession. And we really considered the call to faith in the past two Sundays. And the next two Sundays, we will be considering the call to intercession. Today is Mothering Sunday. And I know we wouldn't need to argue here. We all agree that really mothers carry families and they carry nations on their knees. We know that they are great intercessors. And when one really loses a mother, then you know you have lost an intercessor. And this morning we choose to celebrate all mothers for taking the time to care for families and to intercede for them. I'll be focusing this morning on the story of Abraham. I don't know whether you are aware or privy of a TikTok that made the, the news of how Brazil made a carnival to worship the devil. Did you all see that? And did you all see what happened the next day? I think it's a story like Sodom and Gomorrah. He probably said, let's go and see what's happening in Brazil. And for sure, I believe he had been patient, but their time had come for judgment. The English word for intercession is taken from the Latin word to come between, which means to frustrate and to intervene on behalf of someone. Now Christ stands between us and the Father to frustrate the plan of the enemy against our lives and to intervene on our behalf. He intercedes. That is why we pray in Jesus' name because by his sacrifice we are made righteous and we can actually approach the throne of God through Christ Jesus. What a great sacrifice that Christ made for us so that we are able to approach God. The story we are considering today introduces us to Abraham as an intercessor. It helps us to understand how Abraham and his descendants were actually called by God to be a blessing to the nations. Two things are made clear in this story. Number one, Abraham and his offsprings were set apart by God to intercede for the nations. And secondly, Abraham and his offsprings were set apart by God to promote righteousness while living among the nations. There's a clear connection, therefore, between being an intercessor and being right with God. We know Abraham is famously called or known as the friend of God. And so when you think about righteousness, really we are talking about our friendship with God. And as Christians, we know that we are actually descendants or offsprings of Abraham through salvation. As we partake of his blessings, we ought therefore to also really intercede on behalf of the nations. So I have a question for you this morning. Are you consider, I mean, are you concerned about sinners or the lost? When you look at the state of our country and the world at large, are you compelled to pray that the Lord would intervene and in his mercy really come for us? We are called as Abraham's offspring to be fruitful to promote righteousness while we live among sinners where there is so much pain occasioned by the wickedness of the people. 
So my other question then would be, have you ever thought about the effect of your holy living and what that has, the impact it has upon those who live around you? Do those who live around you know that you're a Christian? How is your holy living, righteous living affecting them? So if we are Abraham's offspring, then we are also called to promote righteousness. We are to clothe ourselves with righteousness. I want to suggest at least two things we are called to do in our call for intercession. The first is that we are called to reason with God in our intercession. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 8, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as snow, as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Many people think God doesn't want us to question him, but this scripture tells us differently. God urges us to go to him and to reason with him. We know two people who reasoned with God, and the first is Abraham. He reasoned with God concerning the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, and as a result, God promised he would not destroy it if there were at least ten. And Abraham was interceding for the righteous in that city where there was so much wickedness. He should have been angry with God and agreed with him that they need to be destroyed. But he was a friend of God and he felt the freedom to actually confirm first before agreeing with God. What if they are 10? You know, you, you saw that you had that conversation from 50 all the way to 10. And of course, he learned. You know, he was taught. He gained some knowledge that there weren't 10 people in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, having a conversation with God on behalf of another is exactly what Abraham was doing, and that is intercession. In this case, he was actually interceding for the righteous. But in the process, I'm sure you agree with me, he was also interceding for the wicked. Because had there been at least 10, the wicked would have been spared for some more time. But unfortunately, there weren't 10. And Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11 tells us, really helps us to understand that when you pray that God delay his judgment, really you may be also praying um, according to God's will. Because as Ezekiel 33, 11 says, Say to them as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Meaning if you continue with the wickedness, the result is death. If you turn away from wickedness, then you live. So I want to encourage us this morning. If there is anyone of you who's been interceding, for a loved one, for somebody who you know really needs the Lord. It's according to the will of God. And God hears those prayers. And so don't be discouraged. You may have taken a long time and wondered, is God hearing me? It's in accordance to his will. It doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked. Continue standing in the gap for your loved one. God will come through for them. Don't give up. The second person we see reasoning with God is Moses. And you know, he was reasoning with God concerning the rebellious Israelites. God wanted to destroy them for their idolatry, but changed his mind because of Moses' intercession in Exodus 32, verse 11. The Bible says, But Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. Lord, he said, Why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. This is a story where Moses is with the Lord coming down, preparing to come down in the Ten Commandments. Of course, if you continue with that story and see the end, you remember that Moses arrived truly the golden calf and he was very angry just like the Lord had been. And I encourage you to read chapter 32 of Exodus to see the end of that story. 
But God had planned for a big disaster. Why? The Israelites had done wickedness by breaking the first commandment. And Moses' intercession really saved that nation from that disaster. And you know, Moses was interceding because he knew the character of God. First Peter chapter 3, verse 9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to have to come to repentance. God does not mean arguing with him or making excuses for a nation or for ourselves or for our actions. Nor does it mean trying to get God to change his laws when we think about reasoning, but reasoning with him means giving him reasons why we ask for mercy. Why are you asking for mercy for that person? Why are you asking for mercy for this nation? Why shouldn't God come and judge the nation of Kenya given the kind of wickedness that there is? Give God reasons. Let's stand in the gap and intercede for our nation because we are not in a good place, I'm sure you all agree. Let's give reasons. The word of God will give us very good reasons. Number two lesson or we can learn from scripture regarding intercession, at least that we are called to do, is we are called to repent in our intercession. Daniel chapter 9, verse 15 to 19, and I encourage you to read it, gives us a story of Daniel asking for forgiveness on behalf of his nation as if he was the one who had sinned. The Bible tells us in verse uh, 15, and now, O Lord, our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and have made a name for yourself as at this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. Daniel took the sin of his nation to own himself and he repented as if it was him who had sinned. I'm urging you this morning, please go kneel at your closet of prayer and let's intercede for our nation because we are not in a good place. And part of that intercession ought to include a moment of repentance because of the wickedness. I'm sure you've seen a lot of suffering currently in our country. And the Lord is calling you, therefore, to repent on behalf of this nation so that you may have mercy. I know you have heard with me the reports every day in our news of killings, of violence, of abuse against children, vulnerable, of hunger, of corruption, and the list is long. Our leaders may have failed us to protect this nation and the people are actually suffering. Ezekiel 9, 4 has a promise for you who makes the decision to do exactly that, to stand in the gap. The Bible says, and the Lord said to him, pass through the city through Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and groan over the abomination that they, that are committed in it. The Lord notices you when you choose to stand in the gap on behalf of our nation. That is a promise for you. Don't look helpless when you see the situation in our country. Do something. Can you imagine if we all who are here present stood in the gap and prayed for our nation, that the Lord will not come with his judgment to destroy us? There's a promise in Second Chronicles 7, verse 14, that we famously know. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. I call upon each one of us this morning to answer the call to intercession. Intercede that the righteous may be protected when God comes with his judgment. Intercede that the wicked will quickly repent that that none may be lost when God comes with his judgment. Uh, Hebrews 11, 32 to 40 provides a list of people who are intercessors. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. And the amazing things they experienced as a result of their standing in the gap and acting. They stopped mouths of lions, 
They were made strong out of weakness. They became mighty in the war. Women received their dead back. And the list is long of the mighty things that they were able to accomplish as they decided to intercede and to act. But they suffered. They suffered, they endured some were tortured, others were mocked with the sword, they were killed, and they were stoned, and the list goes on and on of what one is likely to go through when they make the decision to stand in the gap, to act and to intercede for our nation. Please make sure as you intercede that you are interceding on behalf of the Lord according to his word. Please make sure as you act that you are standing on the behalf of the Lord and really representing him so that the nation can receive salvation. Because if that isn't the, is not the case, then you are likely to endure the judgment of the Lord. I pray that the Lord will find us faithful this morning to be intercessors. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we bow before your throne of mercy with thanksgiving for your mercy upon us, for calling us like you did Abraham, encouraging us to stand in the gap and to intercede for others. And when we do so, we remove focus on ourselves and we choose to focus on others. As you help us, Lord, I pray that you will encourage everyone here this morning to stand in the gap on behalf of their family members and their loved ones and their friends but also on behalf of this nation that you may come for us in Jesus name we pray amen may the Lord bless you